This is Unregular Radio. Two hotheads where activism happened, and we're trying to get our next guest. We're actually, for once, a couple minutes early than we planned, but only like five minutes. Hi, no one's here to take your call right now. Please leave a message. And that's uh, the answer we get. Uh, uh, trying to get in touch with Steve Burke, who's running for mayor of Miami Beach. Supports marijuana legalization. He's a, a former athlete, or still probably an athlete. He's a, he is still an athlete. Once I, an athlete, always an athlete. Yeah, I saw his video where he did, he, he's got the fist pump down. He's got the fist pump down? Yeah, he's a great tennis player. Oh. And he's got a lot of pro tennis players uh, behind his campaign. Oh, yeah? And some celebrities. That's Real big balls. time. One of the biggest celebrities in the world. Who's that? Richard Branson. Richard Branson? Is behind his campaign. Is behind this guy's campaign? Yes. Oh, no wonder why I didn't answer the phone. I know. He's probably water skiing with We're naked We're trying to reach Hollywood and Miami. Let's try that again, Kaufman, Rob. Can we call? try to call Steve Burke? He's famous for the Macklemore parody video. He's got over a million views, and he's got one with Eminem. He's Hi, no one's here to take your oh, call right on, now, Steve. Uh, come on, buddy. I know he's not too big. He's probably busy shooting some... People? Parody videos. Oh, parody videos. So. Giving a speech. <laughs> it's Miami. I don't know. I thought he had been shooting people. Probably busy shooting something up. Yeah. Ah. Intravenously. It's probably interviewing models right now as we speak on the beach. That's right. For his uh, for his, his campaign. His campaign. You know, he needs to, he needs a a, a live in wife to yeah. to help him win. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Like maybe. they did in the Veep. I don't know if he's married. He might be married. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? We don't know. We're I'm trying sure to find out. Nice guy. Let's try him again. Can yeah, give him another try. We're really reaching today. Usually we, we have so much activism news we've been talking about earlier in the show, but we're trying to get this guest on, and he's not answering his phone. We're going to try him again. Oh. That's what we deal with. Oh, it's Steve ringing. Burke. It's ringing. Oh, wait. I think he's... I think he, oh. Hello. Hey, Steve. Hey. This is my cat. Hey, guys. How you doing? We have to tell you what, we're live on the radio. Is that cool? We're not... We're, we're not, live on the radio. Right now. Radio people. Yeah. How you doing? We've been talking you up. We've been talking about that you're running for uh, mayor of Miami Beach. Miami Beach. That's tell, correct. Tell us about this campaign. Well, you know, I ran uh, in 2011. It was the first time I ran for office. I ran for mayor. And I challenged a 14-year incumbent and possibly the most popular mayor in, uh, in Miami Beach's history. And uh, I came in second, actually. I, out of four candidates, I came in second, much to a lot of people's surprise. I, I got 30% of the vote. And my campaign was definitely unique. Yeah. You know, we used a lot of social media, YouTube videos. I, I, I even had a you know, sexy sack man show up at a commission meeting and prank the mayor. And, <laughs> oh, my uh, God. That is the most amazing video. What, tell, tell people again. We had the applause going. What did you do when uh, you brought in the, the, the singer? Tell us what, what happened there. Well, essentially, you know, I, I, I did a little digging and found out that Mayor uh, misled the pension trust and lied on her form, claiming that her duties as a dental assistant were similar to her duties as a commissioner, and she got an extra $30,000 of pension money because of it. And, uh, you know, her response was that she didn't know what she was signing. One of her assistants put this paper in front of her, and she just signed it and gave it to him, and they approved they approved this pension for her. And, uh, you know, I thought that that was incredibly dishonest, and I was trying to think of a creative way to get as many people uh, to know that our mayor is, uh, is stealing from the city's pension trust. And so I made a speech at City Hall in front of all the commissioners and the mayor, and uh, at the end of my speech, I asked for the mayor's resignation, and then I, put, I, I said, you know, if you consider resigning, uh, I, I have the perfect resignation theme music for you. And I present to you Sexy Saxman Superstar Sergio Flores. And on cue, Saxman came out and started playing Careless Whisper by George Michael. Oh, we gotta and, have uh, to, we got to look that one up, too. <laughs> Careless Whisper. You know the, that yeah, song. Yeah, you know that song. Oh. And, and, you know, and the mayor, she could have cut my microphone off. I'm actually kind of surprised that she didn't cut my microphone off. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm also surprised that we didn't get arrested because the chief of police was in the room. You know why you didn't were the get... three other candidates for that, that wanted to become the new chief of police. So we thought we were going to go to jail. I know. You know, that's borderline, but, like, you got away with it because you could tell some people were laughing. They actually really enjoyed it. It was funny. Man, that was... It was, yeah, here we go. I mean, when you present that <laughs> at, the, at the Tent City Hall hearing, wow. That's intense. So that's what you. I like. This is what I really like about you. You you really get involved, Steve. 
politically. You make it a difference. You came in second place. You're not a joke now. 30%. You got millions and millions of views on that latest Macklemore video. On the Eminem video, you've had a lot of views on YouTube. You're turning into something that was kind of a joke, but it's educational all along, and you're really taking it to the next level. Do you think you can win this campaign from mayor? I, I do think I can win. I think, uh, you know, people now see that, you know, I'm a viable candidate. 30% of the vote, nobody expected that we'd do that well. People did vote for me. If you look at the precincts that I won in the election, I won Star Island, Hibiscus Island, Palm Island, and West Avenue. Those are the precincts with young people and really rich people. So I actually, you know, appealed to either the educated vote or the young vote, and now I think all the, the other candidates have a great respect for my, uh, my ability to get the voters out. How did you get some of these celebrities, like Richard Branson, how did you get the tennis players to endorse you, to, to uh, go on video and talk about your campaign? Well, I, I used to be a professional tennis player. Uh, the, you know, the first kind of 23 years of my life I spent playing tennis, and uh, I was a two-time All-American in college, and afterwards I, I, graduated, uh, I graduated Yale and went on the pro tennis tour. But in one of my first tournaments, I, uh, I herniated a disc in my back, and my career kind of was railroaded from the beginning. So, uh, but I've kept in touch with all these players. I grew up with them. I played Roger Federer. I've got a winning record over Andy Roddick in the juniors. Uh, you know, I grew up with these guys. So they all know me and have a great respect for, uh, for me as a person. And when I told them that I was uh, running for mayor, they all came out and supported. That's awesome. You know, it sounds very similar to my experience where you're really close to being successful in one field. I was so dedicated to um, the sport I was in wrestling, and I had injuries too. And in an early stage, and when I was really at my top peak, and it ended, and uh, it sounds like the same thing that you kind of you you you've, you haven't stopped. You found other ways. It's the, the videos. You are focused now on the on the marijuana issue. And I saw someone post something that one of your parody videos on the marijuana. I think it was the Macklemore. Might have been the Eminem video. Was the most. Um, positive and smartest marijuana activism video of all time on YouTube, and I almost have to agree. Do are you? I, how, what is your advice to people out there that are, are fighting for different causes? How do they become successful and get take it to the next level like you've been doing lately? You know, I, on as if I look at the country as a whole, I'm pessimistic about our political system. Right? I think it's really messed up from the top down. But if you have an issue and you go into your own little community and you try to make a difference in your community, it's absolutely possible you can make that change. You know, I may not be able to change state politics or national politics, but Miami Beach is a small little city. I mean, we only have 90,000 people here. I mean, and, you know, compared to bigger cities like Miami and, you know, Boston, all these other big cities, we're, we're a small city. And I thought, you know, if I can make a change in my city, my city which has a history and a culture of corruption, my city which has a history of cronyism, if I can expose what's going on in my city, then I can make my own community a better place to live. And so I, uh, my advice to everybody out there... Oh, we lost them? Yeah. Uh-oh. That was good. Yeah, the NSA... We've been waiting, and that was a good interview. The NSA didn't want them to... What did uh, you... Uh, You've got some more questions, Frank. What's your next question going to be as we dial him back? Let's try to call him back again and see if we can get him, Rob. My uh, my next question to him um, was was well. First, I was going to ask him where geographically in my in like Miami area was uh, Miami Beach. All right, let's find. That out. was my question. Yeah. Uh, first question. Uh, my, my second. I know question, I've been asking like a hundred questions. My second right question now. was going to be. Um, see, you, you gave me a couple. Alcoholic beverages and I get greedy with the questions, didn't I? No, no. I told you they were just like water. It's like water flavored beer. It's fine. Um, Drinking water does that to me. A beer flavored water, rather. <laughs> At any rate, I digress. Are we calling him right now? Yeah. Are we try to call him back. He's. It's frozen. Our system's frozen. Okay, oh. so it's on our end. It's our bad. He's probably still talking. It's going to be yeah. like one of those moments where you realize that nobody's listening. That's really frustrating. I'm sorry, Steve. You, yeah. He was making a really good case for he his was. campaign. He was. He was making a great campaign. This kid, you could tell. He went to, how, let's talk about that. He went Yale, to Yale, yeah. Yale graduate. I was actually asking if he was a skull and bone is what I was going to I know, ask really. Him. Sounds um, like it. I yeah. mean, his, his videos are Hollywood. They're really professional. Yeah, he might be a skull and bone. I'm trying to get that. Can we get that uh, system back up or is it down for good? Down? Restarting it. Oh, we're it's restarting. restarting. Okay. We got some issues sometimes on regular radio in Boston because it's been really hot in here. Hot. Saturday we have a show, doesn't it? Hot. 
Yeah, it's going to be brutal when the summer really kicks in here. Yeah. It's only spring still. The first day of scum- the summer didn't come yet until, uh, what, the 21st? Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. Wow. Wow. Lots to look forward to here, though. We got all kinds of stuff happening, you know, activism happening here. What do you think about this Steve Burke, though? Steve Burke. We, we, gotta, gotta leave, we, we, we can't let it go with this because he, he was on fire. I like that. You yeah, know? he was. He was. Maybe that's why he dropped the call. <laughs> it was our system, it wasn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. It was our system, of course. Phone melted. Yeah, His phone, phone went and melted. Yeah. Unless it was. Uh, Miami Beach is hot. Dude, it is, like, miserable in Florida. Like, I don't even know why you would want to live there. Like, the heat is just like you walk outside and you're wet. Yeah. And like, why? Like, well, why? You know? I, I'd be interested in uh, being down there to support Steve Burke on Miami Beach, where it's hot. I, I guess. Do. I mean, yeah, sure. I mean, it'd be nice. Thirty percent of the vote. vote. Yeah, no, that's if we had good. a candidate in Boston for mayor that got thirty percent of the vote and was coming back and had a million views on YouTube for one video. Yeah, we'd probably be better I'd, off. I I'd mean, be psyched. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, when I um, it gives me hope. Helped to run the campaign for Cunningham. We ran against Maki. We got twenty percent of the vote and twenty two percent of the vote. We were pretty happy with that. That's good. You know, yeah, you know, things would have worked out. Oh, we're calling. Ring, ring, banana phone. Hey guys, I don't know what happened over there. It was our system. It melted. Yeah, you were making too much sense. I just crashed. We thought it was your phone. And <laughs> Do it was you guys awesome. want to call me on Skype? Would that be easier? No, we're no, good. We're, we're, good. We, yeah. we're into it. Like, usually our system doesn't crash. I don't know what happened, but uh, that's cool. Okay, cool. So, uh, we, Frank, you had a, a question for... I did, I did. Um, Steve Burke. So, where in Miami exactly is Miami Beach, like, proper? Like, where, like, like in relation to... Miami- <laughs> Miami Beach is a different city from Miami. They're very close to each other, but they're separated by Biscayne Bay. So Miami Beach is a uh, is a city that's on the beach. Like we have a small strip of land, and then there's Biscayne Bay, and then on the other side of Biscayne Bay is where you see the beautiful skyline, is where you see the American Airlines Arena, where the Miami Heat play. You know, but everybody kind of uh, comes to Miami Beach to play. You know, it's one yeah. is this major tourist destination. We have uh, about ninety thousand residents, and it goes from First Street to uh, a little bit north of 80th Street. Yeah, no kidding. And that's is that like where South Beach is, or is that not? Is that on the mainland? South Beach is a nickname for the southern portion of Miami Beach, which is between First and Twenty Third Street. So yeah, I live right smack in the middle of South Beach on Nineteenth Street. Awesome. awesome. There you go. Awesome. There's an awesome um, like uh, German beer place on that that street. I forget the name of the big, you know, the causeway there, the main one where all the restaurants and things are. Lincoln Road. Yes. It's like a German beer garden. You should go take a picture holding like one of those boots. <laughs> drink the whole thing. It's called Hofbau, and yeah, we, we, we go there to watch the soccer games. We have a pretty big Latin community down here. A lot of Brazilians, a lot of Cubans, a lot of Latin America. And so, uh, you know, they actually get into the soccer matches, uh, the European soccer matches. That's, and that's awesome. That's everybody goes to watch it. So how did you, like, how, so you said you polled well or you with, um, with rich people and young people. How did you do with the, with, the Latino, with the Latino vote? Did you do well? Did you pull well? How did that work? I, I did all right, but, you know, I ran against the first ever Hispanic mayor of this city, who is a Cuban grandmother. You know, she's 72 <laughs> yeah. years old, and uh, while she is pretty much completely incompetent at times, uh, she is a very popular mayor. She's done some good things for the city. I think she's not, you know, I, you know, I, I thought she's, she's well out her welcome, and she's been on the commission for 14 years already, and we definitely need some new blood in there. But she's popular amongst the Cuban grandmothers, and uh, and they definitely vote for. Her. And how how did that issue do with uh, number one with that Cuban community with the Hispanic community marijuana that you've been promoting one of the, one of the main issues, and also uh, with the athletes that you talk to how do how do they both those communities feel about the marijuana issue that you're promoting? Well, uh, you know, it actually polled quite well in Miami Beach. I spent a good amount of money to do a poll and see where the residents stand on certain issues. And uh, marijuana was polling pretty well. Uh, You know, most of the city realizes that, you know, it would save millions of dollars in taxpayer money if we just decriminalized it. We don't have to make it legal in Miami Beach, but rather than sticking people in jail for it, which we arrest about 1,000 people a year, rather than ruining 1,000 lives a year and putting those people in jail and costing the taxpayers a couple million dollars a year, Let's generate revenue. Let's give these people a ticket, like a citation, like a parking ticket of $100. And, and let's not ruin their lives because, you know, once you get arrested for marijuana possession in Florida, good luck getting a job for the next 40 years of your life. Exactly. It's just not gonna, it's, it's, it makes it very difficult. It's so true. So um, since you're, like, obviously there's, there's um, the beaches in, in Florida are public, right? 
so is is there a, a separate like uh or like a state police kind of um aspect there that would be patrolling the beaches and would they enforce decrim differently if it was passed in miami beach uh, no, actually, so Miami Beach has you know, the Miami Beach Police Department. We don't have state police on the beaches. It's, it's police each, you know, each city polices its own beaches. And uh, and the truth is that the commission in Miami Beach does have the ability to put it out to a vote. We can let the residents of Miami Beach decide. I mean, I'm not saying that we need to unilaterally make this decision. Let's let the residents decide what they want to do. Unfortunately, I just sat down with one of the commissioners a few days before I announced I was running for mayor. And, uh, you know, he had told me that because I'm running, he's no longer going to support putting decriminalizing marijuana on the straw ballot for this November's election. And I asked him why. He goes, you know what, because people who vote for decriminalizing marijuana are going to vote for you. And I don't need you getting more votes. And so I looked at him and I said, you know, you'd rather, you were going to do something that was good for the city, and you're no longer going to do it because of your own political ambition. I was like, that's the, that's the reason why I'm running for office, because of people like you. Yeah. You know, you'd rather, right. you'd rather ruin a thousand more lives, and you'd rather have the city spend a two and a half million dollars to put people in jail for marijuana. Which, yeah. I know the man smokes, or has smoked, and I also know that the man does believe in decriminalizing marijuana, yeah. but he yeah. won't do it now that I'm running. How petty is that? When you believe in something, you're just going to spitefully not do it, just because of politics. Well, that's what most politicians would do. Most politicians don't actually care about any residents in their community or their city. They care about getting reelected and holding on to their power. They make a career out of being in politics. That's how they make their money. Yeah. You know, one of the reasons why I'm shooting a documentary this year uh, called Follow the Money is because it doesn't make sense that these politicians are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars to get a job that only pays six grand a year. Yeah, tell us about this movie. It's called Follow the Money. You've got a Kickstarter right now. What is this movie about, and what are some of the things you're offering on Kickstarter? So, you know, we're shooting every single part of this campaign because we want to follow the money and find out exactly why the three candidates that are running for mayor are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars for a job that doesn't pay anything. You know, it only pays ten grand a year. If you're mayor, it pays ten grand a year. If you're a commissioner, it pays six grand a year. Yet these campaigns are sometimes four, five, six hundred thousand dollar campaigns. And, and we want to find out exactly what their relationships are with the special interests, why they're, you know, why they're doing this. Uh, I know the real reason why, but I want to show everybody else why they're doing it. And it basically is the same in every city in America. The reason why these career politicians get into politics is to steal from the taxpayers. It's to find ways to line their own pockets and to better their own lives and not better the lives of the residents in their community or the residents that voted for them into office. Yeah, that's, I, I, I like uh, what I see, too, on the Twitter Everyone should check it out. Follow the money uh, by Steve Burke on. Uh, I said Twitter, Kickstarter. Excuse me, Kickstarter. Uh, you right now you've uh, got 56 backers, 37 days to go collecting money for for this project. Follow the money. If you don't reach the uh, the large goal that you have, looks like you have 18,000 so far, which is a good amount. Does does it still get made? What's going to happen there? Well, it's going to get made, but it's just not going to be the same. We really need, like right now, I've been filming everything with my roommates and with, you know, it's, it's really amateur right now. We'd like to take up the production value and have enough money to fund several cameramen to follow the candidates, to do, have research assistance looking into exactly where this money is going. You know, we have all these campaign donations coming in from these packs and these super packs. And, and, you know, we need to find out what's going on in our city, why we have so much corruption. Miami Beach has had seven major scandals in the past year and a half. We've had cops get convicted and go to prison. We've had firefighters go to prison. We've had code compliance officers get accused of extortion for nightclubs. They're going to prison. I mean, pretty much everybody's gone to prison in the past year and a half. And it goes all the way to the top. So, you know, ultimately we need the funding to make this documentary and to show everybody what's going on in our city and show it's the same thing in other people's cities. And also find out exactly why, uh, you know, our commissioners take such an anti-marijuana stance when, you know, I know for a fact the four of them spoke. Yeah. You know, so what's going on here? Exactly. You know, why are you such a coward? Why can't you come out and do something that you know is right, that you know is good for the community? And so, you know, we, we're doing this kickstarter campaign to raise money for this documentary it's a really different kind of documentary i mean most documentaries when you hear the word documentary you think it's going to be boring but you know i am a comedian i am an entertainer there's going to be a lot of shocks and surprises there's going to be a lot of celebrities in the documentary it's going to be a really great film 
We're raising the money on Kickstarter. We're offering some amazing rewards for people who donate. You know, for $25, you get the film. You get the digital download of the film. That's what we're really hoping that most people uh, buy. But if you have more money and you want to, you know, go after one of our really amazing perks to have, uh, you know, some celebrities that have donated experiences, yeah. you know, for, 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 for tennis fans, you get a chance to play against the Olympic gold medalist and the Wimbledon champion. For UFC fans, you get to, you get to go to a, a training session with Alistair Overeem, one of the great Dutch MMA fighters. He's a legend. You know, you get to, to meet him, hang out with him. He'll teach you. He'll get in the ring with you. Um, you know, if you're a basketball fan, uh, you got a chance to invite Chris Humphreys, the power forward for the Brooklyn Nets, to play in your pickup game. I mean, I don't know anywhere that's ever offered an NBA player to come to your pickup game. And, and yeah, it's unbelievable. I mean, you got Craig David, who we all know. Uh, you got the Black Widow package. For pool, I mean, you you've got a lot of uh, you got the uh, the sax player we talked about, the sexy sax man Sergio Flores. You got a lot of celebrities yeah. up there supporting your campaign. We do have effort. one more surprise. We haven't announced it yet, but uh, you know we have this uh, ultimate golfer's fantasy package for people who like to golf. In our Kickstarter, we show that you can get uh, one of the famous Playboy playmates of the last couple of years, Amanda Cerny, will caddy your golf game. Well, I happen to be friends with another girl who I just found out is going to be this month's Miss July, and she's volunteered to join Amanda. So you have two Playboy Playmates caddying your golf game for the entire day. Wow. And, uh, and, and let me tell you, this, this girl, Alyssa, who's going to be Miss July, is one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen in my entire life. I, she, she used to live in Miami. We're close friends. She helped in my campaign. She's on my website. I just found out, you know, that she's going to be Miss July, and she's probably the hottest playmate that I've seen awesome. since Amanda. So, yeah, Amanda, two we'll hottest playboy playmates to, to, to caddy your golf game. We're watching. We'll, we'll check. We're on the we're on the uh, Kickstarter. We're looking at Frank. Just scrolled. We were scrolling up on our computer, and he was like, "Stop there!" And it was on Amanda. So, uh, yeah, you should check that out, Amanda Sandy. Is uh, if she's uh, Alyssa's the other playmate, so check it out. We're, we're on uh, two hot heads where activism happens. The phone number is six one seven two zero six ten fifty. We're in Boston. We're talking to Steve Burke, a candidate for city of Miami Beach mayor. Yes, candidate. Yep. He candidate. Thirty percent last time, and he could win. He's a young upstart, professional tennis player. He was. He's a, a YouTube sensation. Check him out and uh, support him on Kickstarter. Thank you so much, Steve, for uh, calling in today to our show and, and filling us up. Thanks we, for having me, guys. I failed to mention one of my rewards for everybody out there, a very affordable one, is for $75, you get to be in my movie. We're going to put a picture of you on screen in the opening credits, and it's going to be really cool. we got a famous DJ who's creating a special house track for the opening credits of our movie, and every single Kickstarter supporter who backs it for $75 gets in the movie. Wow. That's awesome. Be in the movie. You heard it. You know how to do it. Chris Humphreys is also supporting the NBA player who is married to Kim Kardashian. Just also saw that. Uh, you, you got a lot of people supporting you, and we're hoping you win, Steve Burke. And I love what you're doing. And uh, anytime you need uh, to get the word out on anything that you're promoting, you let us know here at Two Hot Heads. And uh, we're expecting that we're going to have a column in Boston out on the street on your campaign. DigBoston.com is going to have a story. Thank you for coming on the show again, Steve Burke. Fantastic, guys. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. Take it easy, man. And we are the two hot heads where activism happens. And uh, give us a call here at 617-206-1050. And that was Steve Burke, candidate for mayor of Miami Beach. That's right. And he's got a lot of, I mean, look at that dude. He's taking it to, the, what do we say? Taking it to the next level. Taking it to the limit, man. Just like in Scarface. It, yeah, I mean, he, he's, he, he's got it going on. Yeah. He might win. He might win. Hard to beat an incumbent, but I like how the way he does it. He's doing it with some humor, put it in their face, but uh, he's really successful. I mean, yeah. the guy went to Yale University. Absolutely. So, I mean, it, it, I mean, when you have connections, I mean, that's kind of the way things happen. You know, you can make things happen. You make things work, and you know, he clearly I, pulls well with with a certain demographic. He's young, and, smart, uh, good looking, young professional. I love professional athletes when they step up for causes. I, I really do. I, I love to see that happen, especially for the marijuana cause. That's right. That's right. You know, because we need all the voices we can get to make this happen, and you know, fix the 
the problems that we're in here. And I really like this whole idea about you know following the money and figuring out you know exactly where this corruption is 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 coming from and who it is and and what they're doing and you know. And the point Bray brought up about how much money is spent for an office that really isn't worth it. It's like they're paying what do you say ten thousand a year for that office? More than, I mean yeah yeah they paid to, for me yeah, they that's paid the salary year, yeah. for the position and people are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to get that position. Makes you wonder how they're really being paid, right? Well, yeah. I mean, under the table, kickbacks, you know, free additions on their houses. And you know Miami. I mean, but there's a lot of cities out there that, uh, you know, when you look at uh, kind of skimming and crime, L.A., Chicago, Boston, New York, you know, Providence, Rhode Island, you know, New York City. What are those? Those are uh, crime cities, right? Mob yeah, cities. that's right. We're skimming, baby. Yeah. So there's a long history, a lot of cities actually, and it's not, you know, I'm just naming five or six. There's probably hundreds of them in, 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 in America, and we know there's, you know. Well, absolutely, the small ones too, you know. Chris Farone's I mean, new story in Somerville. In Somerville, yeah, you yeah. know, you got the. Uh, Dick Boston is going to be getting into it on Somerville. That's right. No, I mean, I was reading it actually when I was in Somerville the other day at the uh, Bull McCabe's, and uh, it was. Uh, it's a pretty, it's a pretty awesome article. Hopefully, we can get Chris to come on and uh, yeah. you know talk about that. And, and that's uh, ongoing. Some of the other you know, stuff he has going is, on. This is this uh, is we're transitioning, but digboston.com dot com right now. The, the the feature this week is Chris Farone's new article about Somerville. It's part one in a series. Uh, it's about corruption, public corruption, and basically what's going on is that uh, there's certain corporations that do things for the city government, and there's political kickbacks and um, campaign donations, and it's following the money. And Dig Boston's going to be all over it. And I love uh, what Dig Boston's do, doing. We're we're located at digboston.com, so it's very similar to what uh, Steve Burke's doing in Miami. Follow the money. That's right, and it's 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 actually an awesome cover on the cover of Dig Boston this week that everyone should check out. Um, you get lobbyists and rats and 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 politicians um, being pulled, uh, hiding under the ground. I mean, it's it's uh, it's a pretty awesome picture, and everyone should pick up that article at Dig Boston. It's free. Read it. Um, the Blunt Truth article is in there too. Oh, if we yeah. could segue again, um, so the King of Pop. Mike uh, writes writes an article this every week. This is one weekend. of my I'm proud moments for this. And uh, in 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 the Weekly Dig, it's called the Blunt Truth. And uh, this week you covered the King of Pot. Tell us about it, Mike. Uh, just I've known him for quite a while now. He's become someone that's not just a friend. He's like uh, he is a brother, someone that really supports me. That I love. I love his wife. I love his whole family. I love his story. And um, just being around him, I was able to write this story about him and who he is and what he represents. And the first uh, impression that people often get about him, they, you know, when you hear the King of Pot, I think, uh, what do I, what's the first sentence in it, Frank? It says, the King of Pot? Who does this guy think he is? You think of the King of Pot now? Really? And that's what people say to him. And uh, it's common. And, and that's why he is the King of Pot, because he has an answer to them about his life story, about that it's about his mom and his situation with his medical diagnosis and how his mother was on years and years and years, decades of uh, taking prescription pills that killed her. When she died, she had shopping bags, literally, prescription pills that killed her. And he lived because he decided to, to, to moderate the, the pill use for his condition and, and switch to something that was far safer, cannabis. And how his mother wasn't able to do that because she felt it was illegal and that she wouldn't do it at that time. And it's about his story, and it's about what he's doing now. Yeah, and, uh, you know, KOP is doing big things, um, you know, and going to have big things coming up. I mean, he's got his, he's got his whole media network, you know. Um, KOPproductions.com yep. and thekingofpot.com. Yep, and, uh, you know, coming out and supporting not just marijuana legalization and medic, medical marijuana legalization, but, I mean, you know, supporting activists around the state. And people. Yep. KOP, and people, this yep. is what I love about Michael Malta, too. Let me just kind of sidebar because I didn't quite there's only you only could submit so many words to dig Boston and I I wish I had more and we do have that time here so we'll we'll do it here and it's he supports so many people he really looks at if he can help someone with a little contribution he helps people he's looking for the people that deserve a break that need some help that need some support and he doesn't have a lot like people look at him like he has a lot but he's very generous and he's very respectful and he's a He's just a great person. Yeah, I know. He's an awesome dude. And, you know, I have the, you know, the pleasure of, of knowing him as well. And uh, I'm glad that, you know, his story is able to get out through you, you know, um, in the dig. And uh, and the dig really got behind it this week, too. It's, they, uh, 
a lot of the reporters and editors reposted it, and it was very popular. Nice, nice. And uh, you know, I mean, you're bringing it every week, you know, with this Blunt Truth article, Mike. And uh, you know, it's 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 a great article. It's a, it's a, and you know, the dig has given us a great vehicle here to um, you know. Let our voice be heard in another medium, you know, as yeah. activists and uh, through and you. That, and that is the new book. That's I told people I'm going to be writing a book. It's going to be based on the blunt truth. Maybe that will be the title of it. I think it will actually. The blunt truth by Mike Can. Maybe I mean there you that's go. the column every week, and uh, that's actually going to. Uh, maybe that's a future subject. I Which, call it like bludgeoned by the truth. <laughs> I like that. That's your column. That's gonna right? be my book. Yeah, that's gonna be my column. I'm, we if, I ever, if I ever write a column, it's gonna be bludgeoned by the truth. If we can get you for more time a week. We'll have you do a column. But yeah, I'd love to, man. You, you got a family. You I know. Work. I got a lot of stuff going you on. Got, my life is crazy. How many shows man. do you have? Two. I do two shows. Yeah, I do um, another show on Occupy Boston Radio called The Real News, that uh, starts around uh, nine nine thirty ish on Tuesday nights on www.obr.fm. Uh, with uh, Andrea Romig, and uh, you know we were on the uh, radio for the ninety nine percent. Been doing that for uh, just about a year now, actually, and it's uh, it's a great time. We we do a little bit of different. I mean, it's activism, but we talk about the activism from just a solely news point of view. You know, where we talk about all the different news stories. Uh, Andrea is huge into GMOs, so always GMO news on our on our show. Yeah, and uh, we you should know, have her come on. Talk about drones. Yeah, she 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 works. I'd love to have her on the show here, but oh, um, yeah, her right. schedule isn't always you know. Um, Intertwined, but you, you, um, but you know, I mean, you've been on the show, Mike, and oh, yeah. uh, you know, when we had our elect- special election co- election coverage with Vermin Supreme, yeah, um, last uh, last presidential election, which was, which was awesome. Uh, it was it was awesome to have like a, a presidential candidate um, at our presidential like election coverage. Was that was really pretty cool. wild, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It, it was great, and uh, it wasn't even about the radio anymore. It was just about us. Just being there, you know. Yeah, and we just we just got on and we with you know, Vermin. We shot the shit and. Uh, just had a real conversation. That's actually something I was thinking about starting a third radio show. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no really with who? Uh, with just the people. Um, uh, just a bunch, like John, Stephen, Dwyer, Uh-oh. you, Andrea, me, uh, what, Rob. What? And we would just call it We Digress. And it would just be an hour of I thought just that was random conversation. I thought that was your other show with Andrea. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, but, <laughs> No, nah, like it would just be we. Yeah, that's like, what we're doing right we now. We would have like a loose to- exactly. <laughs> we would have like a loose topic, you know, a loose kind of thing, and then we would start talking about that, and then just the conversation would just go from there, and then an hour after that, we would stop and say, "We'll be next. We'll be back next week to talk about something else." You think people can handle that? As I hit my microphone again, I know you love like hitting that mic. Boom! I, I got my hat turned backwards, and yeah. I think you should probably rock that steez as well. Yeah, I'm just saying. We've been going a while. Yeah, but you know, uh, I keep looking at the wall where the clock used to be. You can see, it. <laughs> you see those guys are coming in the the uh, city white blackout crew. That's right, we got them coming up uh, here at the seven o'clock hour. Live local music on on regular radio. Good dudes too that run in that city wide blackout. They're all right, you know. We like them. Yeah, don't tell anybody. They are the men. That's that right. Local music in Boston. Yep. Yeah, bunch of good dudes, and uh, we should probably take a break here. Maybe and, uh, we should. Yeah, come but on I back. I thought there was something else that we wanted was to mention because you were talking about uh, doing. All, you know what? It's a, well. The last thing I'll leave people with. All right, let's leave them with it. Is uh, expect more from us. That's right. Like whether Frank does his third show, and uh, the stuff with the King of Pot and the community and the marijuana and the free chemi D and all the things that we're involved in. Expect more. That's all we... That's right, because we're not stopping, man. Yeah. We're not stopping until we're clickety-clacked or in the ground, man. And, and so that's just the reality of the situation. And every day and every week you can expect more. DigBoston.com this week. I can't wait till the new article comes out. I got to start writing some articles, man. Yeah, you got to feel it, Frank. I mean, this week I'm, I'm actually destroying. I wait till you see what happens this week. If you heard that last video, the King of Pot talked about uh, he wanted MPA to respond. Mm-hmm. Matt Allen from Mass Patients. Yep. He has responded, and I'm responding to it, and I'm printing it and putting it in print. And uh, people aren't happy with me sometimes, and other people are very happy with me. So, yeah, well, that's. I mean, you can't, you know, please everyone all the time, like they say. Can't just you know, you just speak your mind and speak from the heart, and that's what people will respect in the end, and what's right. Fuck the suits. I'm with the patients. That's right. And uh, we should definitely take a break. We should. What do you we have should. coming up, Rob Kaufman, for music? Little head like a hole? Yeah, because I figured two hotheads head like a hole. Like a hole. Ah. There's a breeze in this head. This is Unregular Radio. Radio. 